Hello everyone, Mrs. Wilson is here today. What we are going to be doing is uh, focusing on uh, shading techniques. I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to work with um, different shading techniques and um, let me turn this upside down. You are going to create uh, kind of a chart in your sketchbook. We are going to be focusing on four major shading techniques. Um, the title is obviously shading techniques. Um, by now you have watched the PowerPoint presentation that explains um, what you were supposed to know in sixth and seventh grade and then you have seen a couple images about uh, the newer shading techniques that you're going to be learning uh, during this unit. Uh, in sixth grade we were working with uh, chiaroscuro. It's a very strong uh, dark and light um, contrast disregarding the color of an object um, and you have seen it shown in paintings done by Rembrandt, Caravaggio and Leonardo da Vinci. So you could see how dark the shadows were on the faces um, and uh, made the image look totally three-dimensional. In seventh grade, if you did not have art, you were supposed to be working with blending. Uh, while uh, chiaroscuro is a very strong uh, change from dark to light in blending, we are extending that change from dark to light and um, we're trying to uh, add as many medium values as possible. Um, basically, it's, uh, blending is a gradual change of the values from dark to light. Uh, you only add a little by little uh, a lighter or darker value to make your object look three-dimensional. And in eighth grade, what we are working with is um, focusing on using marks made by pen, uh, colored pencil, or marker, um, materials that you cannot really uh, smudge or blend together. And uh, you are using lines or dots uh, to create darker values. And that's what we're gonna be focusing on today. Uh, the four major shading techniques that we're working with are going to be blending, hatching, cross-hatching, and stippling. I'm going to ask you, as you've seen, to draw a circle in your sketchbook and grab a ruler, divide it into these four sections, and you can divide it into more uh, based on my uh, demonstration if you wanted to. What we are going to be doing first is reviewing what blending is. Again, um, it is changing the values from dark to light gradually. So I'm just going to grab a regular number two pencil and under my desk you will find in one of the containers um, blending stumps. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the quick section for blending using my pencil first. I'm going to go uh, from dark to medium uh, to uh, light values. Um, you have to know if you have not used the blending stump before that this is just a piece of paper. It will not do anything on the paper unless you use your graphite and you leave a mark on the uh, your project with that graphite. And then you can take out the blending stump. Please make sure that you don't hold it like a pencil and you squish the tip in. Um, try to hold it down on the side. And I like to go in a circular motion um, or following the shape of my object. I'm going to go ahead and bring the dark marks and uh, blend my pencil lines until you can't see it. If you wanted to, you can pause the video and uh, do this section in your sketchbook and uh, continue when you guys are all finished. I am going to continue without stopping. I'm going to change uh, to a uh, marker. Um, you can use a black pen, marker, or even colored pencil for these steps. Again, you use a material that you can't blend anymore. And um, 
we are going to be working with um, hatching as the first technique. Hatching is working with parallel lines. And there are several ways of working with that. I have seen it used in um, in about uh, at least we can sh I can show it four different ways. And I'm asking from you to watch the presentation and pick one of the methods you like and um, practice hatching in your sketchbook. So the first thing is that hatching is done with short parallel lines. The more you have, the darker your value is going to become. Keep them parallel. And I'm going to be continuing this way. Almost um, these lines are touching and covering each other up to create the darkest values. And it will be spaced out to create lighter values that should do it. I've also seen uh, these lines following the radius of your circle. Sometimes they are going all the way out in length. Sometimes people just use it like this. So you can see the difference. This one, the lines are going in one direction. Over here, they spread out. So that's why I don't count this part as hatching. But sometimes these parallel lines can follow um, the shape of an object. Like when you shape an, a sphere, trying to draw a sphere. Um, you can go ahead and bend your lines. I've also seen hatching done this way, that the whole object is shaded with lines going in one direction. And then where you want to have a darker value, you start splitting the distance between the lines. And again, getting them, making them closer and closer. Also, if you press the marker harder, you will have a darker line. If you don't press it, you will have a lighter line. So that's the next one. And um, the same way it's true if you go with parallel lines going along the shape And to keep it, uh, make it darker and darker, you start splitting the distance between the lines. Even if maybe a different. Length. And. Keep going with long, long lines. And only the darkest values will get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. This would um, show better on a strip. All right, this was hatching. Um, you can go ahead, pause the video again and uh, pick one of the techniques or methods you like and uh, shade uh, your circle or use even two or three.